Hello, my name is Maureen Ume, and it is my honor and pleasure to serve as your host as we salute the ambassador to the Republic of Benin in the United States, His Excellency Cyril S. Ogwen. It has been said that there are three essentials of leadership, clarity, humility, and courage. Throughout his life's work and through his personal convictions, the ambassador, Mr. Ogwen, has shown that he embodies all of those attributes and more. I've had the pleasure of knowing Ambassador Ogwen for 12 years. Um, and he's participated in many of our programs. I find him to be a man of great integrity. Ambassador Ogwen, uh, my first contact uh, with him was uh, when he arrived in uh, 2001. I was among the first uh, uh, representative that uh, he met in Washington. Uh, uh, at that time, I was not ambassador yet. I, I was uh, chargé d'affaires uh, AI. It's, it's kind of funny because uh, most people who are watching this now uh, realize that a guy named Mark Powers and I, for 18, 17 years now, have made 131 trips uh, to African uh, uh, countries. Now, the very first one, 17 years ago, well, it happened to be Benin. Now that would, that would have been in 1998, and of course at that time Matthew Karaku was the president, and that was before Surreal came to his position to uh, Washington. Whom I first met in July 2012, when I arrived here in the U.S., and I remember that he was among the first, very first ambassadors I met, and I still remember the very good advice and the good conversation we had. I met him 2007 when I was working at the Millennium Challenge Corporation. Ambassador Ogwen was uh, posted to Washington in 2001 and we met him soon after that, so about 13 years ago. I was privileged to meet the ambassador prior to him becoming the ambassador from Benin to the United States. Uh, this was at an extraordinary conference there in Benin and Cotonou, the capital city, focusing on reconciliation under the leadership of uh, President Matthew Kirikou. I originally met Ambassador Ogoen at my swearing-in ceremony. I became president of the U.S. African Development Foundation in December of 2012, and there was a small number of the diplomatic corps who, who, who came to this swearing-in ceremony to to really to welcome me and to really introduce me to Africa and to their countries. I met him when he first came to Washington, uh, maybe 12 years, 13 years ago. Uh, he's one of my favorite ambassadors, I have to say. A hard-working guy, a very skilled diplomat who really believes in Benin, and he believes in West Africa, and he believes in Africa. He told that uh, because of the relationship between uh, the Republic of Congo and Benin, he had to meet me. Now, Ambassador, from Benin to the United States was actually serving in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, helping to organize this particular conference, and that's where I first met him. I feel that I know him on many levels. He's traveled with us to California to participate in the Teach Africa program. He's worked alongside of us with respect to the passage of AGOA over many years and its many iterations. There's not a time that we have called on him that he's failed to respond. Well, I know him very intimately, very well, because of all the things that we had in common, and because I'd, I'd see him. I saw more and have over the last uh, years, well, since uh, 2002, I've seen more of Surreal than any other ambassador to the United States because of his faithfulness in always coming to these events like the lunches that we do every every couple of months. Uh, he's always there. I know Ambassador Ogwen more than uh, many of uh, our colleagues here. I think I know him very, very well because we have had so many working relations, uh, relationship which has been, uh, uh, been very, very faithful, very, very uh, uh, rich because, as you know, Ambassador Ogwen was, uh, is the dean of uh, the West African group of ambassadors, and uh, he has presided over so many meetings of, uh, of the group, and, uh, and also we have had very personal rela uh, relations. Benin is one of the countries where the U.S. African Development Foundation has been working for a number of times, 
a, a number of years, and we have a very special relationship um, with the government of Benin in that we uh, engage what we call a strategic partnership so that both the government of Benin and USADF are co-funding projects on the ground. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, we diplomats, uh, we, we don't talk uh, a lot, but uh, on a personal basis, uh, uh, Ambassador Ogwen uh, asked me to coach his son, and I remember uh, he, he told me that, listen, this is my only son. I want you to take care of him and to teach him how to be successful in, in, uh, in life. It's a shame that more people have not had the opportunity to get to know him as we have gotten to know him uh, because he is a man worth knowing. He's a wonderful man, a wonderful father, a wonderful husband, and a wonderful representative of Benin. I know Ambassador Gowen uh, very well. We worked uh, closely together uh, on all issues related to Africa. Uh, we worked on specifically Benin issues. I traveled to Benin during his time. I was very honored when he asked me to do that. So I have, uh, I had this son, Jerry, that worked uh, for me for, uh, for three years. Even if he's not working anymore for me, but uh, I still consider him uh, as uh, my, uh, my nephew, my son, because of uh, my relationship uh, with uh, his, uh, his father. Well, one of the things I, I love, again, about uh, Basso Gwen is his spirit. And uh, when we first met, my spirit immediately took to his. And we have been very good friends ever since. We have uh, a family relationship that uh, will uh, survive even after uh, Washington here. I know him very well personally. I've seen him operate professionally as well. So uh, yes, uh, I would say he's a friend. He has proven himself to be a visionary and a bridge builder whose goal has been to serve his beloved country of Benin and her people. And for that, he has been awarded with numerous awards and accolades. He's a man of great faith and courage. I think that he's very unusual and that he's someone who doesn't speak a great deal but when he does people listen to him because what he says is very important and he listens attentively as well the first impression was one that was really great because I could tell and we could both tell that he was a really committed faithful follower of Jesus. He's a man of faith because he's very religious and also he, he's a man of good faith and uh, you can see all those qualities uh, in dealing with, with him. Uh, what I, why I say a man of faith uh, because he's first of all as I said a religious person and also he's a man who is very generous, very open a man who is uh, always uh, ready to share what he knows, always ready to share uh, his knowledge, his network, and uh, in this sense I can say that he's uh, someone exceptional. He's a man of peace, uh, he likes to listen, and uh, he thinks that uh, there is always a solution on uh, uh, any pro problem that we can face. Well, it's very clear that when I first met him, and really developed a relationship, it did not take very long at all for me to see that this was a man who, yes, was indeed the quintessential diplomat, but most of all, and this is what comes out very, very clearly, uh, that he is truly a servant of the Most High God, that he is truly a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in fact, he is not ashamed at all to let people know about his profession of being a follower of Christ. We've worked on a host of issues, as I've indicated, on legislation across the board that advances Africa, on projects that involve his country. And we've talked at length about his aspirations in advancing West Africa and advancing Benin. I've been honored to host a lunch 
for all of our African friends, uh, and most of these are our, our ambassadors uh, at, at a place here in Washington. Never once did he miss. Surreal is the only person who never missed. And, and then, of course, on the Tuesday morning breakfast uh, out at the Cedars, uh, Surreal was always there. With the indispensable support of Ambassador Oglan, we have been able to achieve some very important milestones. The first was to be sure that Benin qualified for a Millennium Challenge Compact. The second is to put together a program. The third is to get it done. Yes, you know, I have been here now for barely one year and six, seven months. Uh, we have shared so many meetings with him and uh, we have uh, worked together on uh, many issues like uh, defining the positions of ECOWAS on uh, issues like, uh, like uh, Power Africa, on issues like the Diaspora Conference we are preparing. There have been times in which he and I prayed together. We certainly have worshipped together, uh, not only here at Greater Mount Nebo, but in fact, uh, I know of his love for gospel music. And so we have actually been at another church where they were having an afternoon service and he and his wife joined us over there where I was to be the preacher for the day. And what I retain from, from those meetings is that he's a man of common purpose and he's a man of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, consensus. And he's mainly also someone who can uh, step aside and uh, try to have all uh, the common views uh, be organized in a way which is uh, uh, acceptable for, for everybody. There were times in the development of and implementation of the MCC Compact in Benin which were very difficult. Challenges on so many fronts. Lots of emotions. And the ambassador, in his own unique way, was able to turn the temperature down, get people to focus on some constructive solutions to solve the problems very pragmatically. But I would say that indeed Ambassador Ogwain is someone who does not preach a sermon, but he lives a sermon through his life every single day. Uh, to me, he's like a brother. He, he's like a brother because we work uh, on uh, many, many issues, uh, both uh, on the personal issues and the issues that benefited even uh, our countries. Uh, there is no need to talk about it uh, here. But uh, there is a complicity between uh, Ambassador Ogwan and myself that people don't, don't know. They think that uh, <laughs> we, we, we keep fighting, but uh, in fact, like we say in French, qui aime bien, châtie bien. The only thing that we've done together on a professional level has been uh, various seminars, various conferences, sometimes weekend retreats that are really uh, designed to equip gentlemen like the ambassador with a spiritual foundation so that they can uh, bring that back to the office, bring it back to their uh, challenge as an ambassador so that they have more resources, uh, even resources from God through their faith to put into practice. Here's an example of that work that we had done together with the government of Benin. That program was so successful that the government and all of the partners asked Africare to be the implementing partner for the National Malaria Control and Prevention Program. In our own church's involvement with Africa, we in fact have a partnership uh, with a village called Yawa there in Benin. He has been very helpful in facilitating some of our visits and we've been blessed with the opportunity to help build a school in Yawa also to help in the development of soybean production. Perhaps what's most impressive to me is his, his real commitment to his country. Um, USADF's work is often at the grassroots of the economy where we're supporting smallholder agricultural activities or different kinds of projects that create livelihoods for even the most disadvantaged and marginalized people in the country. And so what really stood out to me is as we would consult with the ambassador about our plans uh, for projects in his country, the fact that he knew every corner of the country and he really knew how these dollars and this support can have real impact. 
But what helped enormously was the wise counsel of my dear friend of the ambassador and his personal engagement and commitment to ensuring that the compact would be a success. He's a diplomat uh, extraordinaire. Um, you don't know what he's thinking. You know, as a skilled diplomat, he doesn't show his hand. And so whether it's a tough issue or a good issue, you always felt uh, this is a warm guy, this is a guy who really cares about you, he really cares about Africa. He has also served as the keynote speaker uh, for the AME churches in this area several years ago when our general theme was celebrating the A in AME, meaning about Africa. So he is a very, very close friend of this church. We've gone from a small pilot project that saved lives of children to implementing across the country. Africa today is in 3,000 villages across Benin with a comprehensive approach of fighting malaria, of controlling ma malaria, and for preventing it. And an indispensable partner in the fight against malaria for Africa has been Ambassador Ogwen. He's well perceived as having done a very good job uh, here promoting uh, Benin. Uh, you know, they got the Millennium Challenge account agreement during his time. Uh, he'd be, you know, he, he made sure that America paid attention to his country. He also, I think, has this, this incredible um, smile that lights up a room uh, and is the best dresser in this town, <laughs> bar none. Uh, and, you know, he is truly a giant. So we are here, Ambassador Gwen, to say well done. We applaud your leadership. We applaud your service. We applaud you. As a diplomat, it is someone who is very far, has great vision and great perspective. As I look at his role in the diplomatic community in Washington, and with the African ambassadors in particular, the ambassador has been the quintessential statesman in ensuring that collectively Africa has a voice in policy making here in Washington. He set a standard, a high bar for other diplomats to reach. He conducts himself with a great deal of poise and decorum. To me, he's a man of peace, but uh, who spent uh, the whole time here in Washington uh, to work very hard, number one for uh, Benin, uh, number two for uh, uh, ECOWAS, and number three for Africa. He is a model for people who, particularly those who are followers of Jesus, to look and see what he does, the commitment he makes. I think the thing about being a true model is understanding that uh, all of us still have our weaknesses, that we all have our own frailties and faults, but what we ought to be doing as a follower of Christ is striving every day to be more and more like Christ. And it's very clear through Ambassador Ogwan that that's precisely what he does. He's provided a level of leadership there uh, with, with different backgrounds represented as the diplomats come in from different backgrounds into his embassy. He has worked well with all of the diplomats who've come to him. And I think he has set a high standard of excellence and hard work for all of them. We recognize a good diplomat in Washington, D.C. Very important city, small city, where everybody knows about everybody. When uh, an ambassador got a good reputation with uh, US government officials, with uh, NGOs, with uh, corporate America, uh, this is how I define a good diplomat. I think he has put Benin on the map here in Washington, D.C. And as I said, not only Benin, but also the whole West African region on the map. It's very important, the role of the Diplomatic Corps from Africa in helping to be a voice at the table to shape U.S. policies and U.S. programs as we support the continent. And the ambassador was certainly very present at many different forum and venues with his ideas and suggestions, which really created a forward-looking agenda uh, for for Africa and for his own country, Benin. He has represented his country, a very small country, Benin, and he's made it very big in the eyes of so many people through his portrayal 
of the aspirations of his country, through his interactions with Americans, and his solid engagement with the Africanist community in Washington. He has accomplished something that few ambassadors have ever accomplished for their country, and that is he arranged a visit from President Bush, I would say a one-of-a-kind type visit. They broke all the traditions, but the President of the United States came to Benin and spent three hours with the President of Benin. And this was unprecedented. And they arrived at all kinds of wonderful uh, decisions that the ambassador came back then here to the United States to implement those decisions that had been made between the two heads of state. As many times as I've been down to the embassy, there is no doubt uh, that the embassy of Benin has reached a high level of professionalism because of him and it is seen in all of the staff members, some of whom have been here at Greater Mount Nebo. And I've got to say that it starts at the top. And as a result of that, it's very, very evident that the Embassy of Benin really represents its nation extremely well. And when there is a satisfaction from our partners, uh, we come to the conclusion that uh, this has been a very good diplomat for his country in this country. He has just been um, outstanding in his working relationship with people, especially African ambassadors, from all backgrounds, political, religious, whatever. He relates well to people, totally across the board. As a diplomat, the ambassador is persuasive and forward thinking. Um, seeing him at work amongst the diplomatic corps here at uh, in, in Washington. He's someone with bold ideas and is able to really gather support across many to, to shape a new future for Africa. Ambassador Ogwen is a good man. Exemplary. Effective. He's a seasoned diplomat with the highest qualities. Excellent. A brother. He's the quintessential diplomat. As a human being, he's fully compassionate. Um, the work of USADF is focused on the grassroots of the economy, helping to create economic opportunity for all. And I could sense that the ambassador was really very much aware of the plight of all corners of all people in his country, and it was very impressive. Ambassador Gant is a good man. Exceptional. Faithful. A good man. A very good man. A person of character. Compassionate. Oh, the man has such warmth and such grace, a tremendous human being. As a friend, uh, the ambassador is both reliable and consistent. There are many instances where, uh, in my capacity as president of USADF, I needed to turn to him for support in efforts in his country, and I always knew that I could count on him. Important. Loyal. Loving. A faithful friend. A true friend. Trustworthy. He's been a great friend to, to Africa, to, to me personally. Whenever there were tough challenges that we faced in Benin, I could always count on him as a friend to get very wise counsel. As a leader, the ambassador is a true visionary. Um, he recognizes that if you want to see Benin have a bright future, it becomes important to create opportunities for everyone in the country. And um, not many African leaders really recognize the importance of building up the economy from the ground up to create uh, pathways to prosperity for all. He's a leader. Courageous. Available. Humble and constructive. Exemplary. Someone to follow. He was a leader of leaders. He has been a very strong leader in this African diplomatic community. As a patriot, he's clearly very committed to his country. Uh, you can sense that he works tirelessly to achieve results and benefits uh, that have tangible results in, in people's lives. Oh yes, no doubt, a patriot. Unparalleled. Insurmountable. He's not only a patriot for his country, but also he's a patriot for West Africa and Africa. No one speaks more highly of his country than he does. So he is a true patriot. Well, no question about that. Uh, this man uh, was uh, uh, Benin through and through. He's a tremendous patriot. Uh, his tremendous patriotism, commitment, and love of the country. Ambassador Ogwen, I'm going to miss you a great deal. 
I'm going to miss the many lessons that you'd shared with me. At times of crisis, you've encouraged me to pray. At times when it appeared as though um, there were many challenges ahead, we followed your example and we prevailed. I'll miss you. I'll miss being able to call you uh, to represent your country, to represent the African Diplomatic Corps. I'll miss also being able to call upon you for your very wise counsel. But I know that the chapter ahead of you is going to be an exciting one and that you'll spread your enthusiasm, your passion for West Africa, for Africa, to many other people in the future. Prayers and good wishes for him, for him to be happy, for his family to be happy, uh, a long life to him and uh, uh, just happiness for him because he deserves it, because he has shared, he has created happiness uh, in, this, in this group, in the West African group. He has helped people to get together, to know each other better, so he deserves to be rewarded by great, by great happiness. Well, Surya, we're going to miss you, pal, and you've been a part of our lives, and we're not going to forget you. So we want you to come back and, and uh, continue in the long friendship that we've had in the past. Uh, life won't be the same in Washington, D.C. without Surya, our brother. Cyril, uh, I wish you good health, uh, good success for the future, and uh, what is uh, more important, I ask you to stay in touch. Mr. Ambassador, you and I have become very, very close friends. I'm sorely going to miss you, but I know full well that God has got some new assignments for you, whether it's within the diplomatic service or elsewhere. You have done your job extremely well here in the United States. I know full well that as you take on new assignments, my prayer for you is that God will bless you, that he will continue to extend favor upon you and your family. May God just continue to richly bless you. I give you greetings not only from myself, but also from Sister Pamela, my wife, and the family here at Greater Mount Nebo African Methodist Episcopal Church. Know full well that you have a church family here at Greater Mount Nebo that loves you and reveres you. And we look forward to having more groups of members of our church and from other African Methodist Episcopal churches around this country to come and visit you wherever you may be situated. And certainly because of you, have more and more people coming to visit the great people of Benin. God bless you, my brother, and I look forward to staying in touch with you. Ambassador O'Gwen, thank you so much for your friendship. It's been both a blessing and a personal enrichment uh, to my life, to my wife's life, to know you, to know your wife, to know your children. And we ask God's richest blessing upon you in whatever endeavor you, you choose to do next as you leave Washington. Please do not forget there are friends of Benin that you can always count on here in Washington and especially at Africare. I want to wish him well, him and his family. Um, we certainly uh, appreciate everything that he's done here, and we want to uh, you know, really wish him well in his future endeavors. Yes, Ambassador, we will certainly miss you. Um, I can't tell you how much it meant to me that you were there for my inauguration into this important position, and I know you've provided such leadership and guidance that you will be sorely missed. He will be sorely missed in this community here in Washington, uh, but I know it's going to be a tremendous gain for Benin to have him back home. Leaders aren't born, they are made. And from what we have seen and heard, it is clear that Ambassador Gwen has more than earned his leadership stripes. Excellency, we thank you for your service and we wish you the best of luck in your future.